Hi, and welcome to day two of Configmus. I am Amy Arwidmark. And I'm Johan Arwidmark. Welcome to our second day of our month-long user group party. Today we're bringing you a video about upgrading to the latest version of Config Manager, which is version 19.10. Very exciting. There have been some shiny updates if you followed along from Ignite. If you watch our Ignite recap videos or otherwise paid attention in the community, you know that Config Manager, as well as Intune, Desktop Analytics and other features have been rebranded under the umbrella of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Yeah. The first time you'll see that rebranding live in current branches if you grab that um, script that enables you to, first of all, download the fast ring update. But the first time you'll see it specifically on your screen is when you get prompted to update the console, there's a wizard that flashes that shows the progress of downloading and installing the new console. You'll see it there, but you can also go to um, about once you launch the console and see it in large text there, um, it also shows in the ribbon at the very top. The bottom line is it's been rebranded. You won't see System Center anymore. You'll start to see Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Yep. So you might be wondering, how do I update to 1910? I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> first of all, you have to be on Config Manager version 1806. So yep. if you have anything else older than that, you won't and you are in trouble because you're on unsupported grounds too. Yeah. So sh don't. Yeah. I genuinely have no idea if there is a good upgrade path from anything unsupported to supported land. That's something for the expert. No, no. You you would have to do like a <laughs> multi-step upgrade. Have right. to go to a somewhat recent version and then do the next one. You won't even you see the latest one if you're on an older version. So exactly. So if you're wondering how you can update, there's definitely documentation in the what's new in 1910. Um, I'll just pull it up, docs. There is a uh, checklist for installing the update as well as a post-update checklist that you can follow, including things like remembering to do reboots and disabling things as well. Um, I also know that you have written a blog post about it that's a little bit more simplified. Yeah, and I, I added in some real-world stuff that is not covered at all in, in, the, in the current docs. And I also added, I, I call it the, the three coffee break uh, guide. Yeah. Because it's about, do you need to take three breaks in the middle <laughs> of the different steps in the uh, setup? And uh, I will show you that in just a second. Yeah, and speaking of real-world stuff, the um, community hub is super awesome. Yeah. And what I like about it in this release is that um, you can see um, articles that are trending. So maybe you might be experiencing something and you're wondering, hey, is anyone's ha anyone else having this problem? Is anybody else talking about this? Mm -hmm. I don't love that the um, update metrics aren't up to date yet. I really hope that this is something that gets improved. Right now we see that we're only getting metrics for articles that are being updated in October. There are a few, uh, like if you go to the top, it says something about, yeah, last updated in November. This is still not as real time as I would like. The bottom line, this is super cool. You can see what articles are trending. You can see what's been recently updated. So maybe a technology has been updated and you're wondering, am I reading the most up-to-date version mm -hmm. of the docs for that? If it falls into this category here, you can definitely check to see, am I on the latest one? You can also check the date on the article, but it's nice to have it here. Just um, troubleshooting articles, some great stuff, as well as a link to get a link to subscribe to an RSS feed if you wanted to add that to Outlook. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really great. So uh, what I happened to do this week, and I actually recorded a, a video of the setup or the upgrade from early version 2, 19, 10, because I don't think anyone wants to sit and watch an hour-ish long video. No one brought their popcorn and <laughs> drinks to have an hour-long user group party to watch the upgrade. The upgrade? I, I don't think so. Oh, man. <laughs> allows us to fast forward the upgrade pretty quickly okay. to like key points in, in the upgrade. So here, for example, I have the script that Avi was mentioning to enable the early update. And this is something, until it's released broadly, this is something you need to run to be able to see the update in the console. So I simply ran it, and you don't have to do anything more than that. The next time you open the console, it's going to show that the 1910 upgrade is available. However, before you start that upgrade, something I recommend doing as well is to check whether there is a pending reboot, because quite often there is. It's something uh, that burns me every time. I never check. Yeah, whoops. I jumped a little bit too far in the video. But here I'm simply running a that script again. <laughs> I went back a little bit too yeah. far. Okay. And then we should see shortly, It's I'm running the script to um, verify that there is a, a pending reboot or whether there is not a pending reboot. <laughs> Come on. 
how hard can it be? Here we go. And on the system that was indeed a pending reboot. So after that, I rebooted the system, I logged back in, and then I saw the 1910 upgrade ready available. Mm -hmm. And then of course, there is a right click and say install and yada yada, follow through that wizard, next, next, finish. Uh, there is really not much to configure in that one. Uh, something I do recommend is to um, enable production upgrades for clients. Uh, in the past few years, there was very common that we would stage clients' versions into pre-production collection and it would test that a bit and then we'd go production later. But that process has been turning out to be so reliable. So uh, most organizations I work with right now, they actually do allow production upgrades, some exceptions. but. Mm -hmm. It's been fairly positive. Uh, so this is the upgrade without validating I, I was referring to. But anyway, next, next finish. And once you've done through that wizard, you can watch the uh, uh, update running and the CM update log file will give you a lot of information um, about the upgrade. Much more than you actually need usually, but it's, it's there. Um, and sometimes um, if you rebooted the server and started the upgrade too fast, you would get like a SMS access. You cannot find the database and just give it more time. And it usually goes through that and, and uh, continues. And after a little while, you'll be able to actually watch the, this is the error message I talked about. Um, you will actually be able to open it up in the GUI and see some progress as well. But before I'm just paused the video right there. Um, should you do an upgrade to 1910 today? So it depends on who you're asking. I maintain a very small lab and I have always worked for smaller organizations and I always felt that I was capable of handling what might come up, but you're a consultant and you've seen a lot of different environments, a lot of different things. So yeah. I think that your answer is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, what I recommend and what we've been doing for customers for the last few years is I recommend going early on dev and pre-prod environments or test environments, whatever you like to call them, and have them sit there for a week while you're learning about the new features, etc. Uh, if there are any hot fixes that will be published, hey, Boki, <laughs> uh, they will be uh, released shortly or pretty quick. And then the next update, they will actually be enrolled into this one. So. Yeah. This is something I recommend. Um, just wait a little bit for the production upgrades, but please note that even though it is an early update, it has been tested on millions of clients uh, already. So it's not like you're the first one, but but still that, that's the approach I'm, I'm, I'm doing for now. And I know there are some Twitter conversations whether you should do it right away or you should wait a little bit. And, and that's just, my, just my, my take on it. So What's your take on it? That's okay, you don't have to answer. That's a nice shirt. <laughs> Christmas shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't destroy mother's Christmas shirt. <laughs> you. Moving along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the upgrade, um, yes, takes about an hour. I usually take the ma tell the management that it will take four hours because it gives me some time if there are some troubles. But yes, next, next, finish through the setup. And in the very end, you will see... Well, let me see if I can find it real quick. It's always hard to rewinding in. Uh, uh, come on. Here. Basically, when you see it says turning on features, that means the upgrade is basically done. And now you can install the new console and upgrade that one. And after that, you have to do another reboot because there will be a pending reboot on the site server. Uh, the documentation says it might only do that if there is a, a .NET update, but Every upgrade I have done the last four years that have been a pending reboot after. So I always go ahead and reboot. And once you have done that, there's only really one thing to do. And that is uh, to update the boot images to the latest version. So you get the latest OSD binaries in them. And then if you disable any antivirus before you did the upgrade, now is the time to enable it back again. So apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. Of course, we have the blog post. Uh, available to you and goodness that was a lot of talking that was a lot of talking yes yeah are we done we're done Yay. thank you so much for joining us Boo. we hope to see you tomorrow where <laughs> this kid will walk you through what's new in osd right yes can i have my movie you can watch a movie yeah <laughs> we will catch you next time have a great day thank you for tuning in thanks